Hi, I'm Krista Clapp. I'm a research director for climate finance at Cicero, and I'm leading the Clean Invest project. The Clean Invest research project aims to improve our understanding of physical climate risk. We bring together climate scientists and investors to provide transparency on physical climate risk. We're trying to answer the questions, how can investors better secure the value of their portfolios against physical climate risk? Which risks require immediate attention from investors? And what information and data can investors use? The research consortium consists of partners, including Cicero in Norway, Varnigan Environmental Research and Climate Adaptation Services in the Netherlands, and I4CE, Meteo France and Carbon4 in France. Climinvest is a JPI climate project funded through the European Research Area for Climate Services. As part of our work to provide guidance to investors, we've put together this series of investors to examine different physical hazards, um, to look into case studies and to explore different concepts. Today's presentation is on calculating climate risk and is presented by Roman Hubert from I4CE and Violaine Lepuste from Carbon4. Thank you, Krista. So we will present you the common elements of physical climate risk analysis that can apply to all categories of financial institutions. The analysis consists in measuring how climate conditions might impact the activities of the financial institution. The exposure of financial institutions essentially occurs through the climate impacts on economic entities that institutions finance as assets in their portfolios. For example, a flood might jeopardize the capacity of an individual or a company to repay a loan that is in a bank's portfolio. There are three components of physical climate risk to consider in any analysis. First, we need information on a selection of climate hazards. It can include what we call acute hazards. These are extreme events such as floods or heat waves. And it can also include chronic hazards which are, for example, long-term shifts in precipitation patterns or sea level rise. And it's particularly important to understand how the frequency and intensity of these hazards may evolve in the future in the selected area. Second, we need information on how the asset is exposed to these climate hazards. For example, to measure the exposure of a company, we may need the location of its key suppliers, production sites, market points, and logistic networks. And third, we need information on the vulnerability of the asset. It measures how much the asset can be affected if the hazard occurs in the area of exposure. And the vulnerability can be broken down in sensitivity and adaptive capacity. The sensitivity measures how much the economic entity may suffer the consequences of the hazard, and the adaptive capacity is a mitigating factor to the sensitivity. It describes the flexibility of the economic entity and the resources it can use to cope with climate hazards and adapt to them. It's also worth mentioning that some adaptation measures can have been put in place already and they reduce the exposure and the vulnerability of the asset. I now give the word to Violaine. Thank you, Roman. Um, so to carry this kind of assessment, uh, you'll need different kind of information. Uh, we'll take the example of a flood risk assessment for a transportation network. So you recognize uh, the four components of the climate risk equation that Roman just mentioned. The climate hazard. So basically it's climate indicators that can be built from climate data. Uh, then you need to, to select other information such as the scenario, the spatial resolution and so on. But basically it's climate indicators. Then the asset exposure, uh, which is also basic information on the asset, uh, the location, maybe the financial value. Um, then uh, the two uh, other components, sensitivity and adaptive capacity, are maybe more difficult to get because they are more technical. Um, so for sensitivity, uh, it will be maybe uh, the design of the infrastructure or the industrial plants, maybe the material that were used to build the building, uh, the age of the building, uh, and for adaptive capacity it can be insurance or uh, uh, protective um, infrastructure uh, against flood and so on. 
So uh, if we follow the example, uh, you see um, for climate hazards, you can need to assess floods. Uh, you, you, you may want to follow the number of days when rainfall exceeds uh, 50 millimeters. Uh, so you will assess uh, these climate indicators in the past and also in the future, for example, in 2050 or 2030, um, to uh, appreciate the, the, the exposure of the asset. And to get the exposure of the asset, you need the GPS coordinates of the infrastructure network and maybe the revenue by section, for instance. Then on sensitivity and adaptive capacity for this transportation network, you might want the elevation of the network, uh, uh, the age of the infrastructure, um, the design and the, the, um, the technical um, uh, design of the network. Uh, and you might want also uh, uh, to know if there's some existing protective uh, wall against floods, for instance. About the sources, um, for climate hazards, uh, you can find some climate data on um, public uh, climate data portal, such as Copernicus uh, in Europe, but also um, through a private um, climate provider. Um, usually, uh, but it's not always the case, um, um, climate uh, provider will provide ready to use climate indicators Whereas uh, on public climate data portal, you will find maybe some uh, um, more uh, raw data you will need to process a little bit. So it depends on the, on the use you want to, uh, on your ability to process the data. Then asset exposure, you might find information from the asset owner, the asset uh, manager, or some from financial databases. Um, and on sensitivity and adaptive capacity, this is as I said, the, 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 the most technical data um, that has to be uh, really asset specific, uh, at least sector specific, but you, um, you might want to go even asset level specific to get the real vulnerability of the asset you are assessing. So let's focus on climate hazards. Uh, you have basically four uh, questions to answer before running the, the the, the hazard exposure uh, assessment. You have, of course, to select the, the hazard you want to study. Is it heat waves? Uh, is it floods? Is it uh, the increase in uh, global temperature or maximum temperature? So it depends on the sector, it depends on the location. Uh, you, you have to really uh, um, uh, run a, a, um, a gross um, assessment to select the right hazards. Then you have to select the right climate data meaning to define the climate indicators uh, you, you, you want to assess for each hazard. For instance, for heat waves, um, you might want to study uh, the temperature exceeding 25 degrees or maybe 30 degrees, depending on the uh, vulnerability of the asset uh, you are assessing. Then time horizon, you have to select uh, the, the time horizon you want to, uh, to do the assessment on. Is it 2030, 2050, maybe end of century? Uh, this is, of course, uh, um, a compromise between the, the availability of climate data and maybe the time horizon that is useful for your, uh, for your company and for your assessment. Then on uncertainties, um, there is basically two types of uncertainties, um, models and scenarios. Uh, on models, we really recommend to use uh, the output from several models to integrate the uncertainties coming from the modeling exercise. Then on scenarios, it depends on the time horizon. If you want to run the assessment uh, before 2050, one scenario can be enough. Uh, but then if you do the assessment after 2050, you should use several scenarios and at least two scenarios to get the entire uh, uh, uncertainty uh, envelope um, uh, coming from the scenarios. Now, if we focus a little bit on vulnerability, um, as I said, and as Roman said, there's two components, sensitivity, that can be the technical uh, design and specificities of the infrastructure or the industrial plant or the building that you are assessing. Uh, you have to integrate also some um, contextual um, information on the environment 
uh, that is around the, 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 the asset, uh, uh, such as land use or maybe the, the value chain around the asset you are assessing. So it's not only technical uh, characteristic of the asset, it's also other information that can uh, influence the sensitivity of um, the asset. Then adaptive capacity, it's all the measures that help uh, the, the project to adapt to a changing climate. So the higher the adaptive capacity, the lower the vulnerability. And these adaptation measures uh, can already exist on the, on the asset. Um, they also can be uh, asset specific or coming from the territory that is around the, the project. For instance, if uh, the asset, for instance, the transportation, transportation network is located in a, in a territory where fraud are really well managed, then it's a good point for the, for the network. So this is an adaptation measures of, of the territory that help the, um, uh, the project to be uh, more resilient. So adaptation measures will uh, reduce the sensitivity and increase the adaptive capacity. Roman, the floor is yours. Thank you, Violaine. So depending on the underlying data and the methodological choices, uh, financial institutions can use this information in diverse contexts. And this can range, for example, from screening risk at portfolio level to engaging discussion with economic actors and their adaptation needs. But in any case, there are key considerations to keep in mind to avoid underestimation of the risk. First, various climate hazards may occur at the same time and their impacts may combine. Second, a given economic entity may suffer diverse types of financial impacts arising from exposure along its whole value chain and its broader environment. One also needs to keep in mind that the accurate measurement of risk in a portfolio ideally requires asset-specific information, which is challenging. And the available methodologies are not able to quantify all potential impacts in different economic sectors alike. So for more information, you can refer to the ClimInvest fact sheet on fiscal climate risk analysis in finance and feel free to contact us. Thank you. <laughs>